family, hello! I'm Refashionista Sherry, as always, and today I have three absolutely fantastic things to share with you. The first is this uh, amazing vintage collar that I rediscovered in my wardrobe, and it's just so fantastic. And you can, you know, put it on, style it with so many different things, and the tie part actually comes off, so I can, you know, just have a fancy collar if I want. Let me know. Down below, how would you style this groovy collar necktie thing? <laughs> anyway, okay, next, number two, I have an, I can't, I, it's indescribable how awesome the tutorial I have for you today is. And I mean, again, I say this all the time, I know I do, but really, 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 this one came out so much better than I ever could have imagined. And I'm super pleased with myself for figuring out how to do certain parts of it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm taking this uh, from Batastic to Small Damage Denim Dress and transforming it into something absolutely phenomenal. And I mean, seriously, you're gonna wanna make one for yourself and you can with the upcoming tutorial. <laughs> and number three is this. La la. How adorable, how adorable is that? Look at that sweet little mini me refashion pin. <laughs> and this is from the sponsor of this video. Yes, I have a sponsor, isn't that fantastic? And it is pins.us. And if you want to find out how to get your very own personalized enameled pins, stick around and have a listen. So here's how I got my amazing little mini me refashion pin. Pins.us reached out to me and at first, seriously, I was kind of like, this is an odd pairing. But once I read up on them and everything, I was like, yes, please sign me up because enameled pins are like one of my favorite things ever. And of course, who doesn't want their own little personalized logo and design on enameled pins? Like, come on, of course you do. And something that is so awesome about pins.us, if you are not a graphic designer, if you don't have your own logo, they for free will work with you and create your own personalized pin designs and not only that check out their website they have like loads and loads and loads and loads of templates that you can use to you know design one yourself if you want to or if you just want to have a leisurely scroll they have tons of pre-made designs that you can order plus there's no minimum order so if you just want one just order one. And of course, the more you order, the more you save. You can get like 30% off, which is awesome. Plus they have super duper low prices anyway. Like I honestly thought I would never be able to get my own enameled pins because I always thought, hey, these are so expensive. Cause that's, I mean, the detail in this is phenomenal. It is textured, it is raised and this is 100% exactly the design I sent them. It is 100% what I sent. There is nothing different. I, it, and it's, I cannot get over how well done this is. And if you are really interested in getting your own enamel pins, seriously, pop on over to pins.us. They also have an automated quotation system. So there's none of this like, oh, send us an email, send us how many you want, send us your design and we will get back to you. No, it's all boom, bam, boom, done on their website. Fantastic, they have free shipping. I don't know, I cannot say enough wonderful things about pins.us. I mean, seriously, link is down below. Go check out their site and <laughs> absolutely go get your own personalized pins. It is so worth it. For this rock and refashionista project, all you need is a denim dress or jacket, some funky fabric dye, and some semi-sheer fabric. Now, this is actually just a curtain that I got at the thrift store years ago, and I'm finally going to use it. <laughs> Plus, of course, your sewing gear. So because I am transforming a dress into a jacket, the first thing I have to do here is decide how long I want my jacket to be and then chop it to that length. <laughs> now because I'm replacing the sleeves with that groovy transparent fabric, I of course have to now chop off the sleeves. And I'm going to cut them off as close to this nice finished edge of the armhole as I can. 
So I pretty much now just created a denim vest and <laughs> I could be done right now and this would be a totally no-so project that, uh, you know, has has a pretty dramatic result. It's not a dress anymore, it's a vest. But of course we're transforming this into a cool jacket. And so because of that, I went ahead and I also chopped off the sleeve cuffs because I'm gonna see if I can uh, reattach them to the new sleeves. And so of course they need to be dyed the same color as this now vest here. So let's go dye it up with black. Alrighty, I have my dye bath ready here and I shall link down below for you guys to all of my top dyeing and bleaching tips and um, yeah let's just <laughs> let's just saturate all this uh, wonderful denim oh that's gonna look so fantastic the dye worked brilliantly. It's not super deep black, but it's definitely an improvement. And now let's move on to making those sleeves. So here's a quick tip. When you're doing your refashions, uh, kind of do what I do sometimes. And I practice a little bit of self-care. So right now I have my hair mask on, my face mask on, and uh, yeah, let's make the sleeves. <laughs> so, so. Here's my fabric. It is wonderful and semi-sheer, and uh, I'm pretty sure this used to be a curtain at some point in its lifetime in uh, the 60s, 70s, <laughs> but I'm going to hold it up, and clearly that is way too long. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I'm not really into using uh, any kind of measure. I prefer to eyeball things <laughs> if I can, and just using my little eyeballs, if I fold this in half and put it just past my shoulder, it actually goes to my wrist. And keep in mind, I am going to be adding the original sleeve cuffs back on, so that is more than long enough to uh, create my sleeves. So now I just have to measure the armhole and get the width, and then we can put it all together. So now I am not going to be using any kind of tailor's measure or anything again. I'm simply going to take my already folded fabric and pop it on top of the armhole, giving myself about a centimeter for seam allowance, because you see the edge here is not so great, so we definitely need some seam allowance there. And then I'm just going to loosely follow the shape of the armhole here. I think it's pretty obvious that I am self-taught, and I have not been doing this for years and years and years. Um, I taught myself actually when I was about uh, about 10 years ago is when I actually inherited a sewing machine and started sewing and taught myself from scratch. So, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. Anyway, so there we go. Now I'm going to give myself another bit of a seam allowance here, pop a pin in, and... Now go chop that to size. So of course I went ahead and used the first chopped pieces as a template to cut out the second chopped pieces. And I now have one, two, three, four pieces of fabric, two for each sleeve. Now all I have to do is sew the longest edges of each set of two together and the sleeves will be nearly ready. So I have so much of this, quite frankly, very beautiful fabric left and I'm wondering, should I make like a cool semi-sheer baby doll style dress out of it or perhaps a pair of really loose, flowy, palazzo style pants? Pants. What do you think? Let me know down below. Should a baby doll dress or palazzo style pants? Which would you like a tutorial for? So because this fabric is definitely going to fray and I don't have a fancy serger, I did go ahead and do a quick zigzag over top of my existing seam here. And then I chopped the edges with my lovely pinking shears because it really does help to slow down and sometimes even prevent fraying. So now it is time to add these groovy dyed sleeve cuffs to the ends of the sleeves here. Now, there's a few different ways to do this, but I just tried a whole bunch of them and this one 
worked the best for me. So this is what I'm going to show you. Okay, so I have my sleeve cuff right side out and my sleeve inside out. And I'm going to pop my sleeve cuff inside of my sleeve. So now we have the right sides facing and here the raw edges are lined up. Now I've kind of put this as best as I can in the middle. Again, no measuring. And now I'm going to grab a pin and I'm going to grab one of the sides here and pin it to the side of the sleeve cuff. Okay, and the exact same thing on the other side of the sleeve cuff. You can see I'm trying to pin a little bit down from the edge here. Okay, so now we have all of this excess and I'm just going to gather it up and hopefully it will look wonderful once it's all flipped right side out after being stitched together. Alrighty, so there I have one, two, three, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then go stitch it all together. Okay, it's all stitched together. Now comes the moment of truth. Let's flip it right side out. <gasps> and that looks awesome. Um, I am super pleased <laughs> with, with how this came out. Wow, that looks so cool. Okay, let's go stitch it on to the jacket and be finished. So I have my vest inside out and now I'm just going to take my sleeve that is right side out and pop it into the armhole here with right sides all facing together and all the edges nicely lined up. That is absolutely perfect. And now I just have to go stitch that together. I mean, <laughs> seriously, I cannot get over how amazing these sleeves came out. I am like impressed with myself, really. <laughs> I love my refashionista imagination, you know, it just, it always seems to work out in the end. And I think this is definitely going to be one of my new favorite things that I've made ever, ever, ever. And the best part is it is no longer too tight. Like I can do it up comfortably now. And so this actually turned out to be an upsizing tutorial as well. You know, getting rid of those too tight sleeves really gave me a lot more space here in the front, which is what I need. <laughs> so also let me know what you guys think of this hat. I, uh, I thrifted this very recently and I'm not sure. I don't know. Can I, can I pull it off? I think with this jacket, it's a must, you know, black dress, funky boho type jacket and this hat perfection. I love it, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know if you think I can pull off the uh, felt hat look or not and i mean hello hello of course we need to now have my little mini me refashion pin on every single one of my jackets i think from now on i might actually put one on my hat as well <laughs> we'll see but again be sure to visit pins.us down below and uh go and get your amazing personalized pins over there and yeah i Oh, sorry. <laughs> I am, um, I can't, I just can't get over how amazing this came out. And the sleeves are like so lovely and loose and floaty. And I just, I love it so much. Oh, right. Also, let me know, um, what should I do with the rest of the fabric? Should I do the baby doll dress or the palazzo pants? Please, please, please help me out. I mean, I know I ask you guys all the time, what should I do? What should I do? But genuinely, I want to do stuff that you guys want to see. You know? <laughs> like that's kind of the point of, of my whole channel is to make the tutorials and the content that you guys actually enjoy and you actually want to see. That's what it is, right? <laughs> so throw a like for sure. Subscribe if you haven't already. I put out brand new videos every Friday and during the week, some little bits and bobs are appearing on my channel now as well. And um, yeah, until next time, stay safe, stay well, 
and I'll catch ya on the zigzag. I love it. Let's check it. So watch. <laughs> this is Confessions of a Refashionista.